Hi Hadley, I'm making you a video so that you can see the kind of work that I do when I work at the river. We're going to jump into the river in a minute, we're going to turn over some rocks and you'll have some things to look at. And maybe when Finn gets a little bit older, you'll be able to show him some of this stuff too. Well, Earth Day comes once a year on April 22nd and it's a special day that we can all take some time and do things that are good for the earth and think about all those special ways that we can help the earth to stay healthy. And part of my job is to take care of the rivers in New Jersey. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about the kinds of things that we do to make sure that a river is staying healthy and clean. The river right behind me is the Muskinetcon River. It's got a long name and it was given that name by the native people, by the Lenape people. Muskinetcon means fast flowing water. All right, so we're going to use two different kinds of nets. One is called a same net. It rhymes with strain, and I know you know what strain means. When you make pasta, you strain out all the water. So this is the same net, and it does the same kind of thing. We're going to put it into the water, and we're going to strain out some of the things that might be living in the water. So this is a net, a special net, that's named for the letter that it looks like. So you could probably guess that this is called a D net. The D net has a long handle so that we can reach down underneath rocks or branches and really get a good sample of what might be in the river so we can check it out. This is how I use a seine net. I have to rub my feet on the rocks. This is how I use a D net. You can see that it's a little bit different and I need to keep reaching underneath the sticks and the branches. Okay, Hadley, I brought the sample up. So now I'm gonna look through it and see what I can find in the net. I'm gonna use this guide to help me understand what I'm finding. River scientists need to sort and count just like you guys learn at school. So that we get a really close look and we can sort and count. I know you guys do some sorting and counting in school. And for us, it's important to know how many of these different bugs we can find in the bottom of the river. Fabulous. Look at the size of that stone fly. <laughs> Holy smokes. I put him. So right here on our guide, we can see this stone fly. And this is what he looks like close up. This is just very exciting. This is a nice big stone fly, everybody. When we find stone flies, we know that the river is healthy. That's a really special kind of insect that needs really clean water. Here's a mayfly. That mayfly has a three-part tail. I don't know if you can see it well, but here he is on the guide, and that's another one that needs really clean water. When we find these things, it's very exciting. Here's a caddisfly. He's green, so he's a little easy to find on here, right? There he is, green fly right next to the guide. We'll put him back in the water. He's gonna feel much more comfortable in the water. Here's a little shell from a mussel. Here's another little stone fly a little piece of a seed that must have fallen into the river. Okay. See, this 
is a this is a caddisfly. There's a picture of him. And here he's a little bit smaller in real life, but you can see the top of the insect coming out of the top of the shell. He made that shell all by himself with glue that he makes in his body. Pretty exciting, huh? So here is a caddisfly, a different one. We saw this guy that had very square sides. This is a caddisfly shell made of individual stones. So this is a different style, but the same sort of thing, a home for an insect. He also made this by gluing together all those tiny rocks with glue that he made in his body. And then he's gonna glue himself to a rock to make sure he doesn't float away. This is called a water penny and I'm sure you can guess how it got its name. It has the same color of an old penny and the same kind of shape. And we can find that guy right here on the guide. And this is another aquatic insect. That means we have very clean, healthy water here. That's a freshwater shrimp or a scud. They're, they just, their, their instinct is to just hold on tight to something. This is a caddisfly walking. His case is made out of rock and a small piece of bark. So now we'll turn over a few rocks and you can see where these creatures live before we take them off and put them in the net. Okay, more caddisfly. Here's another one of the green caddisfly. The green guys, they don't make cocoons out of rock or sticks. We call them net spinners because like a spider, they spin a little net under the water and they catch other insects. Okay, oh, here's another one. Here's a little clam stuck to a rock. Here's a caddisfly without a shell. Here's the shell of a caddisfly. We saw those square ones. Oh. What is this? Here's a little mayfly. So before we pull them out of the river, they live stuck to the bottom of rocks. You can see how much the water is moving. So these guys have a big job to try to stay stuck to the bottom of those rocks. See those mussel shells under the water? They're empty now, which means somebody ate what was inside. I'm guessing it was a raccoon, but it could have been a muskrat or an otter. Here's a plant that grows right in the water. When we find plants like this, we call them wetland plants. And sometimes we say these plants like to keep their feet wet. That's pretty funny, right? They don't actually have feet. They have roots. But they don't mind if their roots are in the water all the time. I wanted to show you some of the shoes that I wear when I go into the river. It's okay to go into a pool barefoot but it's always best to wear something on your feet when you go into the river. Rocks in the river can be slippery, they can be pointy, and sometimes careless people leave things in a river that can be sharp like glass or metal. So I like to have something with a really good bottom so that it won't be slippery. And my very best choice, my favorite thing, is a pair of old sneakers, which you probably have around your house. They'll get wet, but you can put them in the sun and they can dry. The next thing are water shoes. 
and I'm sure you're familiar with those. A lot of times people wear them in the pool or at the beach. They do the same thing. They keep you from slipping and they keep your feet from getting standing on anything short. The next thing I wear when it's sunny outside and when it's nice and warm and I don't need to worry about my feet getting wet, I like to wear these kind of sandals. They have a strap on the back so I know they won't fall off. I never wear flip-flops in the river because if they fall off, they'll float away. So these will protect the bottoms of my feet. Nice strong bottom there. And also they'll let my feet get nice and wet on a hot day. This is kind of a special pair of shoes that most other people wouldn't have. I wear these when I go kayaking. They're waterproof and they protect the bottoms of my feet. This is a special pair of boots that I wear over my waders and you'll get to see my waders in a little bit. But this pair of boots is bigger than my regular shoes because it has to fit over the bottom of my waders, which is definitely much bigger than a regular pair of socks. This last pair are called muck boots, kind of a funny name, but it's just like a big pair of rain boots that you might have at home. But these have a special insulation inside and that helps to keep you warm. The river can be very cold in the winter, but we'll still need to go in sometime to do some tests. So muck boots keep me dry and warm. So muck boots, my wader shoes, my kayaking boots, my warm weather river sandals, lighter weight river shoes, and then my very favorite pair of old sneakers. Well, that's it for now, Hadley. I hope to see you soon out on the river.